Hello world, I'm Daryl from Microsoft Make Code, and today we're going to learn how to make an arcade game, specifically a platformer like the one you see in front of us, where the objective is to move through the level, uh, defeat foes, and otherwise uh, have a good time. Now, the game that we're about to make can be played in a web browser on your phone, and it can also be uh, loaded onto small handheld devices like this that are compatible with MakeCode Arcade. Here you can see the game running and on the small little device I'll have links to these uh, at the end of the video. To get started go ahead and open up a new tab and go to MakeCode.com. Microsoft MakeCode is a free online open source tool for uh, programming many different environments including Minecraft, Lego, and the Microbit. In this case, we're going to use MakeCode Arcade to program an arcade game. So go ahead and scroll down and click on MakeCode Arcade. This is the landing page for Arcade, and if you scroll down you see lots of content here for learning how to program uh, in MakeCode Arcade. In our case, we're going to start a new project, so go ahead and click the New Project button. Uh, the game I'm about to make is going to be called Two Cat, Two Curious. Go ahead and say Create. And now this is what the Make Code Editor looks like. You can see on the left we're going to have a simulation of what our game looks like as we build our game. And on the right is a canvas where our code is going to live. In the center you see these categories of different blocks we can use to program our game. Now in addition to blocks, we can also program in JavaScript. I'm not going to use JavaScript for the purpose of this tutorial, but uh, know that it is there. Also in the summer of 2020, we're going to have Python support here as well. And at any point in time, you can switch freely between these. All right, so to get started, let's set the background of our game. So I'm going to go to the Scene category and drag out the Set Background Color block. And I'm going to pick kind of a sky blue. Then let's create the hero of our game. So I'm going to go to the sprites category and drag out the set my sprite block. Sprites are 2D images that can have behavior and movement in a game. Go ahead and click on the gray square to open up the sprite editor. This is a pixel graphic editor that we can use to create uh, content for our game. So in this case, I'm going to draw our hero and our hero is going to be a, uh, a cat. Although if you're following along at home, feel free to pick uh, whatever protagonist you would like. All right, uh, let's get the body of this cat and then maybe a bit of a head. Let's add, uh, gonna take away a little bit here and add an eye. So that's what it looks like a cat. Let's go ahead and hit done. And now you see the cat appear in the center of center of our screen. Next up, I want to move the cat. So I'm going to go to the controller category and drag out the move my sprite with buttons block. And now you can see that our cat can move around the screen. All right, so let's add some platforms for our cat to land on. I'm going to go to the scene category and drag out the set tile map block. The set tile map block lets us create a level for our game. You can see on the left we have many different built-in tiles to choose from, from forest themed things, dungeons, uh, aquatic, but I'm going to go to the my tiles tab and create a new tile for our game. First I'm going to take a brown color and fill in uh, the tile and then I'm going to add some grass at the top here and add a little bit of grass hanging down, give it some natural edges. Then I'm going to use the transparency block to sort of cut out uh, the bottom of the tile a little, a little bit to make it more uh, kind of a natural edge down there. I'm going to add a little bit of shading using a purple color and some loose stones. All right, go ahead and click Done. Then I can click and drag to add some uh, starting platforms for our game. And when you hit Done, you will see these in the world here. Now notice that the character can actually just move right through these tiles. 
So to fix that, I'm going to go back to my tile map, and I'm going to go ahead and click on this button here, and this is the wall button. In Arcade, you have to specify which tiles are impassable to sprites. So I'm going to go ahead and draw some walls where our platforms are, and then hit Done again. And now you can see that our uh, cat cannot move through these tiles. All right, so the cat is just floating there. Let's make him uh, behave with gravity. Now, to make our character fall downwards, I'm going to go to the Sprites category, and I'm going to drag out the Set My Sprite X block, and this block lets us set many different properties on our sprite. In this case, I want to set the acceleration in the, the Y direction. Now, the way gravity works is it exerts a force on an object, and that force causes it to accelerate downwards. The way coordinates work in arcade and most video games is that the top left corner is considered 0, 0. So, to move downwards in the Y direction, that needs to be a positive uh, acceleration. So I'm going to go here and type in an acceleration. And let's see how that works. And you can see our cat just sort of drops down. That sort of works. And by hitting the up button, we can actually sort of jump. But we can sort of jump infinitely uh, because of the way with buttons is working. So I'm going to change this by hitting the plus button on with buttons. And you can see that there is an X component and a Y component to velocity. That's what VX and VY stand for. So when we move, we can move in the X or the Y direction. And I'm going to cancel out the, the Y direction because I want to control that in a different way. So now I can no longer move up and down. I can just move left and right. And once I've fallen down, I can't get back up. All right. Uh, one small thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename our character to give it a name. Let's call him Hops and Paws. All right, so now we have Hops and Paws, and he can fall. And I need a way for him to jump back up these uh, ledges. So I'm going to go to the controller category again and drag out the on a button pressed event block. This is going to run some code every time we hit the A button here. And nothing happens yet because I haven't added any code. So the way jumping is going to work is by adding a positive, a negative uh, velocity in the Y direction. Remember, so a negative velocity is going to go up because the origin is at 0, 0. And the reason why I'm doing a velocity instead of an acceleration is because I want it instantaneously. As soon as I hit the button, I want to jump upwards. So go to the Sprites category and drag out the Set My Sprite block and change the drop down to Hops and Paws. And I'm going to say the velocity in the Y direction is going to be negative 200, let's say. And let's see how that works. So now I'm playtesting to sort of feel how that works. Oh, and that is way too much jump. That's going to make our level too easy. So let's have that and see how we do. Now, the way to know what your velocity and acceleration should be is to just play around a little bit and see what feels right. In my case, I've played around a little bit, and I know that a value of 350 and 150 is going to give me kind of what I want. The cat falls quickly, and it's able to get up two levels. Now, notice that our cat can actually just walk off the screen. To fix that, I'm going to have the camera follow our cat. This is a great time to use a search box. So I'm going to type follow here. And I'm going to say camera follow sprite. And I'm going to put that in the on start. So the camera is going to follow hops and paws. And now when he moves to the right, you can see the camera sort of following him. All right, this ledge is a little too high to jump up. So let's fix our level. Let's go back to the level editor. And I'm actually going to make our level a little bit wider. Let's make it 50 blocks wide and hit Enter. Now you can see kind of how wide this is. Let's erase some of what we had before and erase those walls as well. Then I'm going to draw maybe some platforms this way, a little bit of a jump there, a drop down here, and some ledges to go back up. And maybe there'll be something to explore over here. And let's end there. All right, I'm going to draw walls again real quick.
and go ahead and hit done. Now we have a bigger level and our cat can successfully navigate this level. All right. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that you can actually double or triple or infinite jump. As many times as you hit A, your cat will jump. To fix this, we're gonna use a conditional statement. So go ahead and go to the logic category and drag out the if true block. And we're gonna wrap our uh, set velocity with this. Conditions are really important part of Arcade and they let us run some code only if something is true. In this case, I'm gonna check that the velocity of our cat is already at zero. So only when he's um, walking on the ground can he uh, jump. So I'm gonna go and say the Y velocity needs to be zero. And now you can see I can't double jump and I also can't uh, jump when falling only when I am on the ground. All right, so now I wanna add a way for us to win the game and lose the game. Now to lose the game, if the cat falls off the edge, I want it to be game over. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to the tile map and I'm gonna create a new custom tile that's just gonna be red. This is gonna be kind of the bottom here. And let's actually kind of make this look like flames maybe. So maybe underneath everything is just sort of gonna be flames. Gonna sort of make that jagged, add some orange in here. And you can spend as much time as you want on the art in your games. That just enhances the experience. Let's add some blue at the very bottom. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit done. I'm gonna take these flames and sort of draw them along the bottom uh, of our level. And don't worry if you misclick some because you can just go to the eraser tool and erase them. Great, now I'm gonna hit done. And then I'm gonna go to the scene category and I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna say on sprite of kind player overlaps block. So this block lets us run certain code if the uh, character overlaps certain tiles. In this case, I'm gonna say this lava-ish tile here. And when the player overlaps that, and so when we created our cat, it was of kind player. Kinds are gonna play a big role later in the game, uh, but don't worry about that too much for now. So now in this block, I'm gonna say game over. So game category, game over. And you're gonna say you lose. And there's gonna be not a confetti effect. Let's have a, um, does a melt effect when we lose the game. So now if I walk off the edge here, you can see we lose the game and everything sort of droops. All right, so now we have a way to lose the game. Let's add a way to win the game. So when we win the game, I'm gonna say it's when we reach the portal at the end of our level. Now there's no portal yet, so let's go add one. Let's go to our tile map and let's create a new tile and I'm gonna draw a portal. Now I'm gonna go ahead and draw my version of a portal. Now I think that looks kind of magical and interesting, so let's work with that. And I'm gonna place this portal at the very end of our level. So that's the goal, that's where the cat wants to reach. Why? Well, we'll design the story in another video. Now, similar to how we had this overlaps with lava block, let's go back to the scene category and drag out another overlaps block. And this time we're gonna say the portal. And when we overlap, with the portal, we want to win the game. All right, so now if we play the game, if I reach the end here, we should win the game, all right. So that's the basics of our game. And in the second video, we are going to add a bunch more features, including enemies, spawning, coins, animations, background. So stay tuned.